Hello. Hello, Drew. How are you? Oh, fine. Thought I'd just go straight to the um, point. I thought we could have a debate on evolution. Um, I believe right. that we are genetically engineered by extraterrestrials and that um, evolution from common ancestor didn't happen, and I thought I'd bring up points to support that. Um, one is... Um, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd like to ask me what I think of that before you plan. Okay, <laughs> sure. Like, I heard you before. You said you believed in evolution, right? So... All right. Uh, so can you tell me what the evidence is for these space aliens? Okay, well, one, I want to... One argument against it is that it's extremely unlikely. Do you believe that? Or can I skip that? Well... Something which is unlikely but which has happened is not irrational, right? So it's unlikely that any individual person is going to win the lottery, but people win the lottery. Well, yeah, but still, like, for example, if the pyramids could be explained by aliens, but if it's more, if it can also be explained by ancient people working really hard with lots of slaves, if it's unlikely aliens exist, then the more logical explanation would be that um, no aliens it, because of odds, right? Mm, I don't know about that. Um, let me just ask you a question, though, if you don't mind, before we get into that. Okay. Could you tell me about your relationship with your parents when you were a child? Um, kind of, they were involved, but um, I'm not emotionally c connected to them. Right. Uh, can you tell me a little more about that? I appreciate you. I mean, I know it's a bit of a left-field question, but I would just like to get some context for how you uh, learn to interact with people. Uh, I'm not criticizing. Or, uh, yeah, I'm um, kind of curious. learned to interact with people kind of mechanically. Um, I tried to get a little better about that, like recognizing emotions. Um, I moved into college now, so I've been away from my, lived away from my parents for a couple of years. So that kind of helped. Right, and the reason I'm asking that is I, I do. Have you listened to this show much before? Uh, yeah, for like four months now. Okay, kind great. Well, really. I appreciate that. I hope that you're finding some value in it. Uh, do you know that it's obviously a pretty nutty topic, which doesn't mean wrong or bad to talk about, but it's a very unusual topic to bring up, talking about space aliens driving evolution? Uh, no, that instead, not evolution. They just recreate newer models of species. So it kind of looks like we evolved. Kind of like right, but you understand that that's quite an advances. unusual. Sorry, that's quite an unusual. Yeah, that that to is. Talk about. And to, so you know that it is an unusual topic to talk about, right? Yes. And so I'm just sort of trying to help you at least understand how it might be easier to talk about things with people. Okay. Which is you bring it up like it's not unusual. Okay. I, I, and that's hard. I think that's hard for people to sort of understand right so if i start talking about anarchy with people mm -hmm. i have to sort of address their existing perceptions of anarchy uh, or, or you know i have to say yeah it's it's a, it's a weird topic it's an unusual topic or you're going to have some reactions to the topic of anarchy that i understand or i'm bringing up something that is going to be a challenge and so on right i don't just say well we should we should abolish the state and and everything would be great right that would be uh, startling to people, right? Yeah, but if you get exposed to a lot of anarchy arguments and you listen to it regularly, you start to normalize it. So, it... well, yes, but this is but this is what okay. I'm telling you is that if you want to talk to other people, so I have to talk like I'm crazy. Topic, no, you have to. Um, well, you, you don't have to do anything. I'm just trying to give okay. you some advice on how yeah, I, to communicate. You have to understand. Person. Hang on, I'm okay. trying to talk, <laughs> trying to talk here. You have to bring things up like, okay, Steph, you accept evolution. I know that there's some, some strong arguments for evolution, some strong evidence, but I'm going to bring up a topic that is going to be quite startling and unusual for you. And so, you know, but, 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 but I promise you, I've, I've looked into it. I've got good sources. I've got good research. So, okay, I th but just saying, I want to I argue that space aliens guided our development and it only looks like evolution and then just start without getting my response is not a very effective way to communicate. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I mean, okay. because, right. Because you need to sort of, uh, um, ask me, you know, introduce the topic to me with a knowledge that it is an unusual topic. Right. Okay. 
And so this is why I'm asking you, when you were a kid, you said that you weren't uh, particularly emotionally close to your parents. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me a little more about that? How, how did that show up? I don't, well, kind of did stuff with me. Like when I was really little, I really loved to play like board games and card games. So we do that together, but I don't know if, if I was too emotional with them or kind of felt distant, especially getting older. Um, like just like I couldn't really bond with them. And do you know how you were, do you remember how you were disciplined as a child? Um, mostly really little timeouts and then older, like taking video games away. All right, so no spanking or anything like that. Uh, well, like one memory a long time ago of being spanked, but I think that was it. I asked them if I was spanked when I was really little, and they said no, so. But you remember one time? Uh, barely, yes. But, like, he apologized after saying he overreacted. So when they said that you weren't spanked, either they don't remember something that you think they would remember, or they were lying. Well, I t talked to them, like, maybe they just didn't think it was that big of a deal that one no, time... No, no, that's a binary question. Was I spanked when I was a child? Yes, one time is the answer. Well, I was asking both my parents. My mom said, no, I wasn't spanked, but I remembered it was by my dad, and he didn't answer, so that... He might have dodged it, not wanting to answer. Right. And... Do you remember your parents asking you about your your feelings? I can't really think of time when that, no. Do you ever remember as a child being upset and your parents noticing and doing something about it without you telling them? Maybe... When I was really little, I think so. Like, if I'm like crying, they would do something. When no, I was really little. I, I, sorry, and I, I no, I, I agree with that. But what I'm saying is that when it's not obvious, in other words, you're not crying, you're just sad. Did they ever notice it and do something about it without you telling them I'm sad? If it's not obvious, no. Right. Now, do you think that's a possible thing to do, or do you think that's not a possible thing to do? Um, depends on how, well, I guess if you're really interactive, you could ask every so often how you're doing, anything bother you, and if they made it feel, made me feel like I could trust them with things, then I would say something, so I guess it would be possible. Well, and I appreciate you saying, so you could continue to ask, but what I'm asking is, do you think it's possible to know that someone is sad when they're not crying without asking them? It's it take a, with a lot of practice, or if you're trained to recognize it, yes. Right. Right. But so it is. But now it doesn't actually need really a lot of practice. It needs that mirroring when you're an infant, and then you kind of have it for life, sometimes whether you like it or not. Yeah. So, and, and do you know why I'm, you're obviously a smart fellow. Do you, do you know why I'm asking you all of this weird, annoying, <laughs> perhaps tangential stuff? Um, to know where I'm coming from? Well, yeah, that's kind of generic, but why in particular am I asking you about this stuff? Um, the, the questions I brought up, or the topic I brought up seemed abnormal, and you wanted to know if there was an explanation for that in my childhood? Again, that's, yeah, that's fairly, again, that's fairly abstract. Um, I, I can be more specific, and then maybe it'll make some more sense. Okay. So you began your topic without empathy for how me or, or, or the Free Domain Radio listeners now and forever would absorb the topic. Okay. Right. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pretty wild claim because you're claiming knowledge of the existence of aliens, which is a pretty wild claim. Um, you know, I think we would have heard about that. doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's, you know, it's a pretty wild claim. And you didn't seem to know that it was coming across as a really wild claim. So what I'm asking is... Um, if your parents had the capacity to understand how you felt, in other words, did they show empathy towards you when it wasn't obvious? You know, I mean, you, you go to a pure 
psychopath and you show a picture of a crying person and you say, is that person sad, right? And they'll say, well, yeah, because, you know, they, that's the sign, right? But if the person is just looking a little muted, then you can say, well, yes, I think, you know, a sensitive person would say, well, yes, I think that person is, is sad. And my daughter looks at a picture where somebody is just looking a tiny bit sad and she says, I think that person is sad. And we've practiced this, you know, like, a, show me your sad face, show me your happy face, show me your whatever face, right? And she's very good at figuring out how people feel without asking them, just by looking at facial expressions. You know, 90% of communication is nonverbal, which is why this show can often be a challenge, right? But she's good at pointing it out, and I, I can sometimes notice when she's upset, when she's not saying anything or, or if she just seems a bit muted. I mean, I'll just ask her, do you feel upset or whatever, right? And sometimes I'll ask her if she feels upset, and only then does she look up and she then feels her sadness and then we, we talk about it. So all of this stuff is very possible to be very sensitive to how you appear to other people. And I think the more unusual a set of ideas you have to propose, the more sensitive you need to be to how other people will perceive you. And my guess is that this topic probably alienates you from some of the people around you. Which, again, is not an argument for the truth or falsehood of the topic, but is, is that, does that happen? Um, I usually don't bring it up. I think I've only told a few people this ever. And how's that gone? Um, they don't believe me that they don't reject me or anything. Yeah, but does that I mean, do you feel satisfied that the topic is, ex is explored? Do they, right, all that kind of stuff? Not deeply explored, but just, I got it out there. And does it return as a topic of conversation or not? Um, no, well, one of it was um, with the person who went to, went to my college but then dropped out, so I don't see him anymore. And the other two, I told like, my family, who is like, religious, so that kind of separates us. Are you well, uh, atheist or agnostic? Uh, yeah. I, technically atheist, I prefer like, non-religious because atheism is often associated with evolution. So I prefer non-religious, but both are technically correct. Right, okay. And um, do they ask you about your... Do they know about your irreligiosity? Uh, yes. And what do they talk about? Uh, do, do they ask you about it, or what are their thoughts about it? They don't really talk about it. They're like, I told them, like, okay, you can believe what you want, and then not really brought up. Right, and um, do they, when you, when you did talk about it with them, what was their response? Like, surprised. Go on. Um... I guess that's, they weren't really disappointed. Uh, like my mom said, she'd pray for me. That's about it. Wow. I mean, that's so, you really didn't talk that much about this very important topic, right? Right. And how do you, what do you think about that? Um, I don't know. Well, no, see, I asked you a feeling topic and you replied with a knowledge topic, right? I said, how do you feel? And you said, I don't know. Okay, how do I feel? Um, well, that I can't really connect with them because if I can't talk to them something this serious, then how can I have, like, emotional connection with them? Yeah, I mean, it's a big topic, right? I mean, you were raised, I assume you were raised religious. You went to, to church and all that and Sunday school maybe and all that. Yeah. And you don't believe. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. And so what, is there anything of importance that you do talk about with your parents? How I'm doing in school, that's... Yeah, not important. Go on. Oh, if that's not important, then no, we don't talk about anything important. 
Right. Right. And how do you feel about that? <sighs> kind of, maybe kind of empty-ish. Like, if I can't, that thing, I, a lot of things I think is important, they don't. So, and we can't really talk about anything serious. And just out of curiosity, I mean, why do you, why do you think you can't talk about anything serious? What, what would, what would, what problems would it cause or what negative things would result? I, I don't know, like once I tried to like talk, talk kind of like politics and I tried to bring up a libertarian issue, like at first went back and forth a little, but then once I made a good point, they kind of like retreated and didn't want to have the discussion. So, huh. and so I you think brought up a good point. Sorry, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, what'd you say? No, go ahead. Or just like, um, they, they're fine talking about issues like this, but once I start making good points, and I think they might don't want to talk about it because they're afraid they might realize they're wrong, so they just don't talk about it. That's what I think. Because, like, my mom, like, we, we did talk a couple of religious debates, but I don't think she would want to talk about it if she's afraid she might be wrong kind of thing right right and so it's you know parental withdrawal in my opinion is always kind of punitive you know because we're so dependent on our parents for growing up that when they withdraw from us or refuse to participate with us they are training us in a pretty powerful way to not to not uh, pursue those particular topics, right? Yeah. And that's, uh, that's really rough on, on a kid, right? Yes. I mean, you, you obviously, I mean, you, you care about where we came from, you care about the universe and, and life in the universe and the origins of, of species. And I mean, you, you care about libertarian issues, you thought about religion and atheism. I mean, you are a deep guy in your thoughts, right? Yeah. And when you bring that depth to people, they recoil in a way, right, with your parents. Yeah. They, they shut the conversation down, right? Yeah. And I, I, I imagine that you don't feel very comfortable pursuing that and saying, wait a minute, why are you, you know, why, why are you shutting the conversation down? This is important to me. That's kind of rude. Yeah. You, you sound sad to me. Again, I can't see your face, but... Yeah, a little, little bit thinking about that. That is kind of hard and what do you think would happen if you were to say listen i mean you know i don't just want to talk about nothing you know we've got a short life and i think uh, that you know they, like i they'd say i don't want to talk about this or something right but why okay so you you be your parents or whoever is so let me just do a quick role play here just so i can sort of understand the map of of this resistance so they say, I don't want to talk about it, and you say, well, I do, and what would they say? I don't know what they would say. Would they accuse you of being rude? Would they say, no, we've already said we don't want to talk about it. Don't push The, the it second one, that they, they already said they don't want to talk about it, that one. Or most likely something along that, those lines. And then you would try to sort of say, well, why don't you want to talk about it? Or can we talk about why you don't want to talk about it? And they would say no to that as well? Yeah. And then I, I, what I would say is I would say, well, l let me ask you this. Sorry, just outside of the role play. Um, what, uh, when you were a kid, did you want to go to church? It's so little, I don't, I think, usually no, but I kind of enjoyed Sunday school because they like kind of ask you, about your opinion, which is something that doesn't usually happen. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. But, um, but church, not so much, right? Right. And when you, did you ever express to your parents that you didn't want to go to church? Uh, by the time I was in high school, yes, but they made me go anyways. Right. Yeah, because you, you said you were so little, and now you're talking about still going to church in high school, right? Uh, yeah. Now, to the day I left for college, still making me go to church. And why, um, hang on a sec, let me just sort of make sure I get my question phrased correctly. I always want to make sure I'm not, I always want to make sure I'm asking questions without 
trying to have the preferred quote preferred answer embedded so this is this i want to make sure i i ask the question the right way because I, I genuinely want information not confirmation right right um, And so you would tell your parents that you didn't want to go to church, and what would they say? You have to go? Pretty much. Or at first they try and like, manipulate me into going, and then if that doesn't work, then they're like, yes, you have to go. Oh, okay. So, if, so the universal statement of that is other people must do what you want. Well, I think if they're thinking, well, I'm the parent, so I make the rules kind of thing. Well, a parent is not a moral category, right? Well, right. I mean, you, you don't get to strangle some guy and then say, well, I'm a parent. And they say, well, okay, then you can go free because you're in a separate moral category, right? Well, right, but they're religious, so honor your mother and your father. They, could, they, use, they can believe that with their religion. Right, right. But, but philosophically speaking. Right. Right. Well, and also, of course, I mean, that's just one Quote, I assume that they're Christians, not, not Jews, right? Right. Okay, so they're down with the New Testament, right? Yeah. And so Jesus said, uh, he has come to bring a sword to the world. He has come to set sons against their fathers and children against their parents uh, and so on, right? So he has come to, to create intergenerational warfare because, of course, he was trying to convert Jewish kids into Christianity, which meant that they had to not honor their mother and their father but go for what Jesus claimed was the truth and not for tradition, right? Yeah, but so if you're a Christian, you don't get to say, honor thy mother and thy father. The entire goddamn foundation of Christianity is disrespecting the multi-thousand beliefs of Jewish parents, right? In that way, yes. Well, wait, in what way? Well, is okay, it not yes, that yes. Way? It's, yes. In that way, like this. Well, if you, well, change, if you go to the other angle, you see the ass of the elephant, right? That is the truth. Christianity arose out of discarding the, the virtue and value of parents. It is an anti-parent religion, and it's explicitly an anti-parent religion. Jesus explicitly says that he's come to set children against their parents. Yeah, I guess forgot about that part. That's Yeah, not the you Bible know, a lot of people do, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, now, now Christianity has become conservative rather than revolutionary, so now it praises the past. But, of course, the foundation of Christianity is overturning the absolute morality of parents completely. And, say, and so for Christianity, if you follow Judaism, you go to hell. So not uh, the, the parents who don't teach their children about Jesus are condemning them to hell. So it's not just disregard your parents. It is your parents are leading you to everlasting torment and hellfire. And your parents are in league with the devil, right? Because they're not accepting Jesus and anybody who doesn't accept Jesus goes to hell. So Christianity is founded on your parents are evil. This is what's so funny when... Christian parents get upset with me. It's like, well, I'm sorry that I listened to your God and you didn't, but this is the reality of the foundation of the religion. Your parents are evil. Break with them, fight them, avoid them, condemn them and their multi-thousand-year tradition of Judaism and follow this, uh, this new guy with the cool sandals, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's, I don't know, it's funny to me when I say question your parents and the Christians get all butthurt about it. It's like, but this is the whole point of your religion. This is why you have a religion. This is why you're Christians. Oh no, now we can't do it anymore because now we've become the tradition. So now tradition should not be questioned. Ah, then why aren't you Jews? Well, because we had someone overturn tradition and call parents evil. I don't call parents evil. I just say it's voluntary. That's evil anyway. Oh, my God. I mean, oh, my God. I mean, it is predictable. I mean, because everybody just uses standards to pursue immediate self-interest and pretend that it's standard. I mean, I get it, but it's still at the, uh, <laughs> at the root of it. It's completely mental. Anytime you try to bring any logical consistency to this stuff. So the rule is other people must do what you want. Parents cannot be claimed as a moral category by Christianity, because Christianity only exists as a religion by calling parents evil. And Christ very explicitly made that point. It's not been buried or lost. I have come to set children against their parents. I have come to bring a sword to the world. 
uh, he was a, a fighter. He was a revolutionary, much more fundamental than anything I ever talk about because the stakes for anything I talk about are not heaven and hell other than your life. So if your parents say, well, I don't want to talk about it, then you can just say, well, the rule is that other people have to do what you want. This is why you made me go to church. So now you have to talk about something I want to talk about. Yeah, they, I, I don't think that would work. Because like, even when I point out things in the Bible, when uh, people in general, they usually they'd say, oh, you took that out of context or something. Oh, yes, the magical phrase, out of context. Right, because the Bible is all full of context. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard uh, somebody, some Christian was years ago saying to me, well, the, if you take things out of context in the Bible, then it's an atheist work. Because you can say, well, the Bible says there is no God. But if you omit the beginning of the sentence, the fool in his heart has said there is no God, right? Then whatever, right? And it's just like, oh, my, oh, man, really? Really? Well, you know, if you reverse all the moral statements of the Communist Manifesto, it becomes the Capitalist Manifesto. <laughs> well, yeah, you can play word games with anything. I mean, if you replace I love you, if you just replace the four-letter word love with hate, then you get the opposite. And therefore, it's a bad marriage. And it's like, what? Is this what you people do? Just sit around and play word games? I mean, there's, I mean, there's no context in the Bible whatsoever because... It is a work that, like a fly's eye, is developed to be impressively multifaceted and appeal to the widest possible section of the population, knowing the diversity of human thought. So, yeah, so they would quote Bible, and they would simply refuse to talk about anything of substance or depth, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is, let me, let me ask you this. Is this a more important and enjoyable and useful conversation than Aliens and Evolution? It's like comparing apples to oranges. They're just good in their own way. Okay. Well, I th and, and the, let, me, let me make it useful for you then, hopefully. or make it more useful. You do not speak depth well. Because you don't have much experience speaking depth, right? I don't have much experience speaking Japanese. I don't speak Japanese well, right? Right. And the reason I'm saying this is you have something important that you want to communicate. Yes. And it's a very deep topic. The origin of the species is a very deep topic. Whether other intelligent life forms exist in the universe, which of course they do. I mean, statistically, it would be impossible that they didn't, right? I mean, as close to impossible as you can get, blah de blah de blah right? Mm -hmm. So this is, and this, is, this, this impacts upon... Uh, biology, through evolution, questions of evolution, this impacts upon sense of identity, this certainly impacts upon religion, and this impacts upon, you know, a pretty fundamental question, are we alone in the universe? It's a fantastic question. I don't think the aliens will come as genetic tinkerers, I think the aliens will come with a gigantic mall, because they have to be traders. They have to have free markets, otherwise they'll never develop the technology necessary for space travel. Oh, it's always the military that comes. The, <laughs> the military, I mean, they, they, can, they can't even buy a hammer for less than $500. The idea that they're going to, of their own accord, without the free market, build spaceships. The only way that you're going to, it's trade. They're going to come with them all, and they're going to want um, whatever we've got. Not our baby's brains or anything. They're just, you know, they're not traders. Because it's traders who get things done. It's traders who build things that last. It's traders who innovate. It's traders who move the whole goddamn species forward. All these resentful trolls sitting on our fucking backs, complaining about the free market while gobbling up uh, the cell phones and uh, internet and porn produced by the free market. It's just horrible. Anyway. So you do not speak depth very well. And I, I say this without a shred of criticism or negative intent. I say this out of affection and out of a desire to help you get what you want. You don't have experience talking about deep topics. Because deep topics were avoided and forbidden in your household. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's not a deficiency on your part. It's a tragedy on your parents' part. I mean, it is wretched for parents to not talk about deep topics with their children. 
to not teach them the language of in, intimacy is depth. Look, this is why I said talking about how well you do in school doesn't count. You can talk about how well you do with school in school with your teacher, with a guy on the bus, a guy on the plane, with your hand puppets, you know, and that's fine. It's not like it's unimportant information. My wife and I will sometimes discuss the weather. Like, doesn't it feel like the whole world is in a deep freeze and I'd sure like to get out of the prettiest space station in the known universe known as my house, which I cannot leave because it's minus 25 outside. But we will talk about very deep topics and very personal topics because having the range is good. It's positive. So you don't speak depth. Right? Right. And, and you, but you want to. So you need to recognize that you don't speak depth and learn how to speak depth so that you can effectively communicate the important things that you want to communicate. I have the podcast or the show or the conversation with the deepest topics. And it's very successful. And so I hope that you will accept my experience in this, in that I grew up in a household, you could kind of talk about deep topics, but it was very conformist, though. In other words, my, my mother would talk about deep topics, but if I disagreed with her, she would explode in rage. So it was you know, deep but terrifying. You know, it was lost in, in, in the minds of Moria without a light. Okay, we're deep. I'm scared, right? I mean, so that was sort of my, my experience. Exposure to depth with accompanying side order of terror. So... If you have not had experience growing up talking about things that are deep, things that are important, things that are foundational to knowledge and, and personality, then you just don't have a lot of experience, which is why I was startled and everyone in the chat room was startled when you brought up this topic as if it was perfectly natural and just launched into it without getting any feedback, right? Right. And it's not because, I mean, it, it, you don't lack intelligence, you don't lack capacity. It's just like if I don't know, you know, when you go to Japan, there are all these formalities, right? Like you have to do things a certain way. You have to use certain words. There are particular rituals of approaching people of higher status or whatever, right? I don't know those things. Like I would just barge in, scratch my groin, sit down, uh, put my feet up and uh, start chatting. And they'd be like what crazy big-nosed foreign person is this who doesn't know anything about anything? And they would immediately be off-put, right? Yeah. And because I don't know those particular rituals, right? And so if I wanted to be effective in communicating in the Japanese community, what would I need to do? Learn Japanese and their community and, and their, their norms, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to talk about depth in society. Listen, you are not alone in this at all, my friend. You are truly not alone in this. This problem of depth avoidance, you know, there's a reason Jesus walked on water and didn't go deep, right? It is impossible to maintain fantasy in the face of true emotional intimacy. Right? This is why fantasy, as I've always argued, alienates, disconnects, and isolates people. Right? Cults isolate people. Fantasy isolates people. Fantasy is a cult. Whether that fantasy is nationalism or racism or religiosity, it isolates people because there's so much you can't talk about. Once you make an ideal, the impossible, intimacy becomes impossible. And the whole world recoils from depth because in depth is common humanity. In depth, we are all one. We all shit, we all fart, we all fuck, we all die. We all think, we all f fear, we all love, we all hate. In depth, there is no hierarchy. In intimacy, in connection, there is no hierarchy. And so all hierarchies must alienate people from connecting with each other, from speaking openly and honestly about thoughts and feelings, right? And so to connect 
is to dissolve the imaginary pyramids of artificial privilege. And your goal, I believe, is to connect. The important thing in what I do is not even so much the content, it's the form that matters. People can disagree with me all they want, but for God's sake, talk to each other about childhoods. Talk to each other about deep thoughts, feelings, disappointments, alienations, connections, frustrations, hopes, dreams, fears. Talk to each other. Talk to each other. Connect with each other. There's nothing wrong with small talk. Nothing wrong with it at all. Small talk does not overturn the conversation any more than froth on the top of a wave overturns an ocean liner. But connect in a deep way and hierarchies dissolve in connection. I mean, I want people to talk deeply and thoughtfully about experiences and ideas and hopes and dreams because through that process, the iron grip of the cult of fantasy, of delusion, of artificiality, of indoctrination, of propaganda, dissolves in connection. So I really want you to have that connection with people. I really want you to have that connection with people. But the first thing in achieving mastery is recognizing deficiency. Humility is the foundation of excellence. And I would argue, I can't tell you anything definitively about yourself. I hope you understand that. I'm simply telling you my opinion. So if it's not true, discard it completely. But I can't imagine, given your history, how you have the, the capacity to connect with people at a deep level, not only because your own personal experience is anti-depth, not just non-depth, it's anti-depth. Children want to talk about important things right? Children want to know why is there war? Children want to know where did the world come from? Children want to know why are parents in charge? Children want to know why do I have to go to school? Children want to know why do I have to go to church? Right? Uh -huh. Children want to know all these deep things. I mean, this, is, this wasn't like you turned 18 and suddenly began to wonder where you came from. You want to know. So let me tell you something. This is the last thing I will talk about, and then I will get your, your feedback. But I really want to tell you something. Dreams occur in waking life. Ooh! <laughs> Let me make sure that that statement comes across clearly. Right. So when the, things that, the things that we're passionate about have, can, can be read in, in psychological terms in the same way that our, our dreams can, as expressions of early childhood experiences. Right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw this in the, uh, in the chat room. Steph goes balls deep. <laughs> that is uh, uh, an impressive way of putting it. <laughs> but, um, so you talked, the first thing that, I always try to listen to what people are saying at every level, at every level. Now, when you're saying to me, space aliens were responsible for our development, I look at that First and foremost, because of your youth and because of your lack of self-knowledge in this particular area, which I completely understand and sympathize with, I first hear that as like I would hear a dream. Like if you called me up and said, Steph, I had a dream about space aliens developing mankind, then what I would say is, how was your relationship with your parents? Look, space aliens are very often unconsciously a stand-in for parents. Why? Because they have superior technology, they have superior abilities, uh, they're often uh, vastly, or vastly above us in, in a hierarchy of some kind. As, of course, gods are as well. I mean, that's so obvious, right? God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, it's all family stuff, right? So when you say space aliens are responsible for human development, what I hear is, I could not talk to my parents right? Because space aliens are much more powerful than us. They guide our development in the same way that parents guide our development individually. In your approach, space aliens guide our development as a species. We can't talk to them. 
because they're space aliens, right? They don't, they don't talk to us. They have trouble empathizing with us because they are a different species. They are manipulating and controlling us, and you said that your parents stop manipulating and then end up with a simple statement of banning. So they manipulate us in the same way that our genetics were manipulated by space aliens, and we have no particular contact with them because they're space aliens. They lack the ability to connect with the human because they're not human. Now, this has no bearing on the truth or false statement of your proposition, but I do find it interesting that what drives you intellectually also seems to me in full accord with your isolated and unempathetic emotional history with your parents. And if your parents were cold to you as a baby, and you talk about space aliens manipulating human beings in a kind of cold way, right? Manipulating human beings, and prior to our memory as a species, it could be that you're, you're actually getting an unconscious echo of your parents' treatment of you when you were an infant. And this is the kind of depth that I would suggest that you explore within yourself before you begin bringing deep topics to other people. You have to make sure that the deep topics are not deep because of your own personal trauma, because of your own personal history. Because when you... If you have not processed something emotionally in your history, and you say you can't feel it or connect with it, I'm going to ask you about that. If you have not processed something emotionally in your history, you will recreate your trauma in other people. And when you first began talking with me, and you can listen to this back in the show, when you first began talking with me, I experienced intrusiveness, a lack of empathy, and I felt invisible in the conversation because my natural responses were neither anticipated nor asked about. You just went on with your own preference without any empathy. And I think that's your parents. So my concern is that you're recreating your own childhood experience with these ideas with other people. And that's not going to be good for you or for other people or for the ideas that you care about. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, it makes some sense. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in school, you can talk to a, a therapist about this issue, so you can journal, you can... But I would dig deep into your own personal history and just make sure that you're able to communicate from a clear and uncluttered and empathetic place. But I don't think you can achieve anything good in the world without first developing your own empathy. And uh, given your upbringing, which I think is tragically lacking in empathy, in fact, it's anti-empathetic in that when you bring up topics that are important to you, it's not indifference but rejection. We won't talk about this, right? And uh, kind of an authoritative bullying uh, of that. So uh, that would be my, my suggestion, if that makes any sense. Okay. I think the empathetic thing, that's just, I've gotten better for small things, like recognizing people's emotions, like everyday scenarios that just haven't had experience on topics like this. Right, right. And I, I, you know, I want you to be able to achieve your goal of communicating deep things to people. Uh, so I would definitely, um, rec I would recommend this as a pursuit. Before you go for the, the before you can change anybody's minds, you first have to connect with them, in my, in my opinion and experience. So. Okay, so then I guess you want to postpone I would this be debate to, to another... I'd Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, and, um, but I would do a bit of self-work first, in my opinion, and then I would be happy to talk about it, but I don't want to participate in anything which may be, may be a uh, recreation of early experiences of alienation. Um, so, yeah, do a little bit of work on that. I feel, please, I mean, honestly, it's, it's an interesting topic, and I'd like to know more about it. Okay, so I'm sorry. I know it's went on a bit of an odd tangent, perhaps, but uh, I hope that was helpful. And if we could move on to the next caller, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for allowing me to hijack your conversation and take it in a different direction. I really appreciate that. I know that that was perhaps a little odd, uh, but uh, I really, really appreciate your, your trust in that. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.